you said this would not happen. No matter how many we kill, they keep coming. The United Nations begins to back their cause. Damn them to hell, incinerate them before they grow stronger. You are failing me. The bombs are almost ready, Comrade Stalin. The final elements are being transported from Gorzov Air Base. How? By truck convoy. Here. You guard them with your life. They must get through to Gorzov. If you fail, do not return. Back, Commander. Yes, sir. Acknowledged. Affirmative. Waiting for this is an interesting curveball for the game to throw the uh, Soviet player. Like, for one, you're given APCs, which isn't a Soviet unit. You're given some trucks that allegedly carry atomic uh, compounds or components. I had to replay this mission, so I kind of know where I'm going. But all that said and done, you kind of have to get around a problem. Because, I mean, obviously it's not just as simple as driving up this road to wherever it's supposed to go and doing things that way. Yeah, I also thought that they were the VTUs were gonna shoot at the turret. Turns out they're shooting at the camo pillbox, which I didn't even notice. This just shows like how strong VTUs are. And obviously, the AI is a little stupid here. Like it could be sending stuff out to attack me, but thankfully, it isn't. Also, since it's the second time it's done that, I don't quite know how a V2 prioritizes its attacks. But clearly it involves uh, attacking a pillbox first. Maybe the V2s know that uh, camel pillboxes are like the one thing to worry about as an attack dog. Just looking out for their good boys. So this is kind of what happens when you get in an AI's range for it's like, it's a guard area, but it also takes, like it also goes further than its guard area allows, so it just like walk, drives back because it quote unquote has to. There goes this force. So you do what any sane person does, and that's to rush an APC with a bunch of units. 
And since they're yellow, we know they're engineers. So it would seem it takes four engineers to take out a construction yard. Or more specifically, uh, convert it. New construction options. Low power. And sure, I could have probably, you know... I could have probably sent in the last engineer to repair it and yada yada, but... Uh, sometimes it's nice that grenadiers move so fast. Oh, and by the way, do you remember what killed the construction yard I stole? Oh, and it took out my only power plant, so... Huzzah! So this is like crisis mode, because I've got nothing that can shoot a cru uh, cruiser, I have no power so I can't do anything, okay. I can't get away from this guy, yes, sir. Like I was hoping, you know, maybe like it'll fuck up his aiming or something, no, nope. gotta go far for that. This is probably the worst I've ever had it for a mission. Like I've never had to completely sell my build, uh, my base, just so I could rebuild it. Oh, and I'm a tile off from being able to build a sub pen, which is really annoying. But hey, at least it's a good demo of how annoying it is to be on the receiving end of a cruiser. Now personally, I don't think it ever matters uh, taking out the construction yard for the allies in this mission. Because I mean, let's face it, uh, you know, we'll, I guess we'll see it more later, but there's not much else for them to build. They've already got advanced power plants, we see them with a refinery, war factory, and barracks. So, smart money is killing production, obviously, but, you know, you kind of have to kill the construction area for that. That being said, it doesn't seem like they have a reserve of cash anywhere. Hell, I don't even see like where they're grabbing funds from, and it'd be a little surprising if they were somehow getting it, you know, from the same fields I was going to. The thing is, though, is that with how inaccurate cruisers are, what's to say we don't use them against their own base? If I can get them to screw up the accuracy enough, anyways. Oh, I was meaning to say that um, since 
you know, generally speaking, we'll have the spy plane and the paratroopers for the rest of the campaign. Um, I don't believe that air, building multiple airfields will ever influence the, how quickly you get them. Unlike, say, just the normal production of units. You know, the idea makes sense. They are rather powerful, and the Allies don't quite get anything similar to it. Granted, you know, Allies do get the satellite, so that's always a bonus for them. But the spy plane and paratroopers alone is quite a, again, powerful tool if used properly. Yeah, the flame tower taking a little bit of damage there kind of threw me off because it seemed to display or it seemed to play that message like right after combat was done. So yeah, it's a pretty good idea you didn't choose to just drive up the trucks and have them get destroyed rather quickly. Oh, and even though the Harvester played the animation, I don't quite remember how far it has to get into the said animation for it to count the funds. So. You know, let's destroy this war factory rather quickly before I see a couple light like, tanks come out of it. If the last mission is uh, fresh in your mind, you'll remember that there's some limitations on where specifically the um, the coastline is, or at least like I guess more uh, beach territory is. Regardless, um, there's a specific area that you can only load or unload from when it comes to sea transports. So, you can kind of game this level, I guess, but not really at the same time. Like, you could build up your MCV right from the start. You'd have a shitty time trying to get money, but you do already start near, well, with a lot of fun. So... You know, you could build up your base a little bit, get a sub pen uh, on the right, and then build the transport to go into the enemy base, flood all your units there, and load the trucks, and then I guess bring them to the end of the level? Seems a little risky though. It might seem particularly weird to be attacking a bridge like this, 
but there's actually a rather good reason we're doing it. Oh, and some... I, again, I don't know what like the radius is on it, but one of my torpedoes is actually hitting that tank. Maybe two of them are, but still, it's pretty funny to be able to take out a medium tank from a submarine. And that's sort of the problem if you were to try and rush the end of the objective, or the end of the level, because all we have to do is get our trucks up there. Now there are two versions, <clears throat> excuse me, there are two versions of this map, so I forget what the other one looks like, but if I recall correctly, the speedrun plays on it, or at least like any like actual speedrun attempt is done on that level. And I, if memory serves me correctly, it's much faster. Oh, and somehow I got a triple kill there. Now, I was hoping to have this, like, get bigger, because I figured that's what I needed. But once you destroy a bridge, or at least a section of a bridge, um, that space is no longer occupied. So you can just, you know, swim your submarines in and do whatever you want. I just, for whatever reason, thought it was like two tiles instead of just the one. There is something rather important, though, to note with doing that sort of tactic. Because, as you can imagine, with the Soviets, you don't really have any surface ships, and, you know, it's just something to, to keep in mind. So... You kind of want to be careful with destroying bridges. Because, well, obviously you can't repair bridges, so anything you do to a bridge is permanent. Silos needed. Building, training, spike lane ready. Construction complete. Unit deploy here. Unit ready. Training. Reporting Unit affirmative. ready. Silos needed. Unit lost. You can tell I'm a little bored. This is one of those like endings where it's like there's not much you can really do. You just kind of have to wait till your transport gets around and you move some vehicles around. Mission accomplished.